Hello my friends, welcome back to today's video. I'm very happy to have you here today because we are going to be discussing what are some of the top jazz albums the homemaker should have in her music cabinet. And with me today I have quite arguably one of my very favorite people on planet earth, my husband. So thank you so much love for joining us today yeah. uh, at the Thuya Hill channel. I'm so glad to have you here. Would you mind sharing with those that are watching what are some of the best jazz albums that a homemaker should have in her musical arsenal. What I'm curious about before you answer that is albums that are good for dinner parties, albums that are good for cleaning the house, just doing basic average homemaking tasks. It's really nice to have livable, beautiful music on in the background and I know you have some good tips. So why don't you just go ahead and give us some ideas? Sure. So uh, the thing about jazz is jazz has many different styles. As society changed and as uh, generations changed, the sound of jazz always changed with it. So when you say the word jazz, you could be referring to many different styles of music. So it is important to kind of know what kind of atmosphere you're looking for yeah. and kind of what kind of mood you're trying to set. So for these particular titles that I selected, I did select things that are very approachable and stuff that you can listen to, but also can also be in the background without demanding your attention. Now, there are albums out there that are very worth experiencing that demand your attention, but for this, I figured we would do something that is more of like an enhancement, like almost like burning a candle, uh, something that would enhance the mood. So kind of like a first aid kit in a sense, like the most essential albums that a homemaker should have. If she's just starting out to build her library, yeah. Would you say these are the most basic but necessary pieces? I won't say that these are the essential. I would say these are a great way to enter into jazz okay. and to kind of see it for what it is and okay. its beauty. Yeah. And I'm sure I've heard a lot of these, right? If not all of them? Uh, you probably have heard all of them at some point, I would okay. imagine. So we'll start with Something Else by Cannonball Adderley. This is a very unique album. It's got the legendary Miles Davis on trumpet. Uh, it's a great album, late 1950s has a wonderful beginning. It starts with that classic Autumn Leaves, very famous mm, tune. Love that. Uh, but this is a cool album because Miles is playing as a sideman, which is kind of rare. But this is a wonderful album to get into on the Blue Note uh, Records. And we have yeah. arguably one of the greatest jazz trios that ever lived. When you say jazz trio, you're typically referring to a piano, drums, and bass. So you have Waltz for Debbie recorded live at the Village Vanguard. This is the Bill Evans trio with Scott LaFaro and Paul Motion. This is an amazing album. Everything on this is wonderful. Uh, but be warned, if you play this and someone goes, what's that sound? You're going to hear people clapping between the songs on this album. It's so, a live album? Yeah, it's a live album. So you will hear that in the background, but it's a wonderful, wonderful album. I uh, love Bill Evans. Yes. Would you say that as a general artist, homemakers out there might really appreciate Bill Evans? for the beauty and the simplicity he provides. I will say that Bill Evans, uh, in his career for the most part, did not really deviate and change a great deal as uh, jazz became more electrified and more influenced by rock. So Bill Evans would be someone that's a little more stable in his kind of offering for jazz in his, in his catalog. He's one of my favorites, which I know I mentioned to you all in my welcome back video. Bill Evans to me is, he's a great addition to any day at home. Quite Absolutely. Frankly. And that's a great album, too. Then you have another uh, piano offering, piano trio. You have Oscar Peterson, really one of the happiest piano players you'll ever hear, doing the uh, George Gershwin songbook. That's a beautiful cover. This mm -hmm. would be about mid-50s, very happy. Every time you play Oscar Peterson, he's another one of those I artists like Bill Evans. He's really consistent and very, for the most part, really a happy man, yep. uh, just a genius on the piano, so check that out. Then you have one of my absolute favorite albums oh. of all time, like that Bill Evans album, Paul Desmond, Easy Living. You got uh, the great Jim Hall on guitar here. Anything that Paul Desmond did apart from Dave Brubeck on the RCA label is worth owning. I've been listening to this album for more than 20 years and it still hits me with the same impact. This is a fantastic album. This is one of those albums when you recommend, even for non-jazz people, and they're like, man, I like that. It just makes me, sets the beautiful <laughs> mood. So this is a great album. Is that something that you started me out on when you were first teaching me about jazz? This is something that you and I have been listening to for the last 15 years together. I, I play yeah. this constantly. This is a great, and my favorite tune on this one would be uh, Here Comes That Rainy Day. Mm. A beautiful tune on that. Uh, then this is probably oh. our daughter's favorite, uh, Chet Baker. This is a kind of confusing because it's called Chet, but there's a few albums that are called Chet, but just look for Riverside Chet. 
Uh, this is a great album. Bill Evans is actually on piano on here, but this is incredibly moody. I've heard people review this as jazz noir. I mean, it has that smoke. It's got that, if it, something can sound like it's black and white, this is this would be it. Very moody, very much a night album, but uh, mm -hmm. my daughter loves going to sleep to this album. She just absolutely loves it. I think she's been listening to it for like three years straight. So this is a great so album. Good. So good. Great for dinner parties, too. Uh, this is an album I did give to you when I first met you. John Coltrane Ballads. John Coltrane is, again, one of those artists that can sound very emotional and it can be very intense. But this is a very subdued offering from him. Beautiful. Just this album is like velvet gold. My mentor once said he can always listen to this album. No, no matter what state of mind he's in, this is always welcome to his ears. So uh, John Coltrane doing ballads. This is wonderful. I love John Coltrane. Uh, this is another happy bluesy album, the great Lou Donaldson on the Blue Note Records. Uh, Mid-50s, there's a conga player on here, so it's kind of happy. You kind of hear some of that Latin vibe. But uh, Blues Walk is an essential. It is one of those tunes you put on, you're like, wow. I just feel cooler just because I'm listening to this. This is a great album. Very, very cool album to own. Uh, Kenny Burrell, uh, Midnight Blue, a very, very cool album. We have a funny story about this album. We were listening to it, having a picnic outside, and our neighbor stopped us and goes, what is that? Can you yeah. tell me about that? And she had lived in New Orleans, but she had never heard modern jazz. She had just been listening to New Orleans jazz, which is different. This is a wonderful album to own. Yes. Very bluesy, very funky, Midnight Blue. Mm -hmm. And look at that cover art. That is just Doesn't gorgeous. Doesn't get any better than that. Quintessential no. Blue Note, right? Oh, yeah. Quintessential. Oh. Uh, uh, I love Stan this gets album. Garberto, uh, Bossa Nova. It's got that famous oh, tune, The Girl from Ipanema. You really can't ever go wrong with Stan Getz. He's one of those artists that is just gorgeous. You love Stan Getz, right? He's one, one of, of my favorites. favorites. Yeah. yeah, this is kind of a so jazz good. bossa nova offering there. And then... Great uh, for an outdoor dinner party. I mean, all of these could work for a dinner party, quite frankly, or just a, a night at home with your family. But absolutely. that, I picture an outdoor party with cafe lights and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's definitely kind of the feeling I get when I hear that. For sure. Mm -hmm. That's a great album. They play it a lot at weddings, actually, too. It's just And yeah. it's one of those albums that made a lot of money, so it proves that something can be of a very high artistic caliber and still be very marketable. So that's a great that's mm. a great album. And last but not least, uh, this is the greatest selling jazz album of all time. Many consider it to be the kind of the jazz album. Uh, it's arguable. This is the great Miles Davis kind of blue. You have famous names on here. John Coltrane, Bill Evans, Cannonball Adderley. I mean, this album is a great example of modal jazz. So they're experimenting with uh, very few chords, but just with a lot of melodies. This album is really... Perfection. I mean, if a session can be perfect, a recording session, that's what it was. It was one take. They did one mm. take and they recorded the album. Wow. Highlights on this album that I love. I love all blues and I love blue and green. Most people know about this album. Most people had in their collection that were not jazz people because it's just that good. It's like, I don't know, just something that you own in your house that is 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 so good that even it transcends the genre, if you will. Mm -hmm. But it yeah. very much is. Makes sense. You know, jazz. Yes. Yes. So, and then two honorable mentions, just great American music. I don't have the, the vinyl on these, but Ella Fitzgerald mm. doing Cole Porter's songbook. So Fantastic album. Love this. This okay. is a gemstone. I believe like 1957 roughly, I think is when it was recorded. And then Ella Fitzgerald with the great Louis Armstrong. This is another wonderful album uh, recorded in Los Angeles in the uh, late 50s. This is just, I mean, if you love great American music, this is an yeah. album known. So the vocals on this, vocals on the other one, but d check these two titles out. All of those titles would be great uh, entry-level jazz and also jazz to just live with, put it on, do yeah. your thing, have a dinner party, entertain, feel good, or just put you in the right mood. So yes. I definitely recommend those titles. Fantastic. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this little rundown of some of the essential jazz albums you might want to add to your collection. The beautiful thing about being a homemaker is that you get the privilege of setting the tone for your home. That means food, that means decor, and of course that also means music. It's a very powerful medium and one that you get to curate as the homemaker. So I hope that this video was helpful for you today. If you are curious about any of these albums and want more information, feel free to reach out in the comments below. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in another brand new video very soon. Goodbye for now. Thank you.